Hi everybody, this is Joe slash FoozleCC, and today I'm going to be kicking off a series of videos where I talk about how to implement different features inside of your 3D platformer game inside of Construct 3. I'm going to kick off with some pretty foundational items because 3D is still relatively new to Construct 3. Uh, it's very new still. And we're going to start with how to calculate 3D distance, how to scale between pixel and your Z height inside of Construct 3, as well as how to implement a ray cast in 3D which is gonna be very useful for certain features inside of your games. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump on in. Okay, right, so this is the level that we're gonna actually be doing our demo in. Uh, this has been a really fun project to work on. This is going to evolve quite a bit as the aesthetics improve and everything like that. Right now I'm just focused on getting some of the controls working so that I'm happy with how it, it, uh, it feels. So we've got a player here that can move in all directions. He can jump, go left and right and all those good things. I've also got a camera that will attempt to, you know, keep your player inside of focus. You can, you know, rotate around the camera with your mouse. You can also do a right mouse move and actually move your character with the mouse, which is, you know, good for doing quick turns like that um, if you want to inside of your games and all that good stuff. Uh, and then also I've implemented it, how to go between first and third person. And when you're in first person, I've got this cool, you know, 3D bullet as well as a uh, laser, which is pretty fun. And these are all things that we're gonna work up towards uh, in our video series. Uh, but today, like I said, we're gonna focus on some of the foundations. So let's go ahead and switch over to that. One quick note is I am using the latest version of the beta, which is 266 at the time of this video. This project file will get updated over time, so you might need to go even beyond 266 depending on when you're watching this. Okay, let's keep going. All right, so over inside of my event sheet, I've got two functions that we're gonna cover today. One, which is the easy one, which is distance 3D, and the other one is cast 3D ray. So let's start with distance 3D. This is a pretty simple one. I need to be able to pass in two points in their XYZ and get back the 3D distance. If you go over to the Wikipedia page here, link down below, this will give you way more information than you really need. Suffice it to say, for three dimensions, we really just need to follow this equation here, which is effectively is going to be uh, your x end minus your x start plus your y end minus your y start plus your end z minus your start z. All those terms are going to be squared and summed and the square root taken of them, and you're going to get back your 3D distance. All right, so coming back to the event sheet, if we look at this, this is exactly what we've done. I've created those three terms, D, R, L, M, and N, which is N minus start for each of the variables. I take the square root of the sum of those items and I return the value. Boom, 3D distance done. Now, one thing that you have to be careful of here though, is that when you pass in your Zs, you cannot just pass in the Z elevation or the Z height. You have to convert it to the equivalent pixel Z. Remember, Construct, 3, Construct 3's current Z system um, makes it so that it's not the same scale as your X and Y. So in order to do 3D math, you have to convert it. And they do have a useful variable that allows you to do this inside of the 3D camera function. Um, let me just remove this just to show you. If you were to go to 3D camera dot Z scale, this actually lets you convert back and forth between the two different dimensions. So make sure you're remembering to use that when you pass it in, you need to be using the same scale as your X and Y. Okay, so let's go on to our other function, which is cast 3D ray. Now, same inputs, you have your start point and your end point that we're going to do the ray cast between, but I'm also taking in a step size, which is how granular do you need this to be? The smaller the step size, the higher the performance hit that you take. So you have to think about how accurate do you need to be. I'm using 10 pixels currently, uh, if you have objects that are less than that, that you need to make sure you're hitting, you need to make it smaller. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at how we're gonna do this. All right, let's visualize this for a second in our heads. So right now, if you look at Construct 3, we already have a behavior called line of sight, and it allows you to do a raycast in 2D, and it returns some useful things, like what object did I hit, what was the hit X and the hit Y, and what was the distance that it was from the start point that I hit it. So those are all useful things that I want to continue to get back. Now, for 3D, it's a little bit more tricky in that I'm going to have to do a custom collision check for each point along my ray in the Z direction. So what I'm going to do at a high level is I'm going to create a line between my start and my end point in 2D. I'm going to use my step size to go along that line in 2D. And then I'm going to use some math to determine at that step point where in the Z height am I along that 3D line? 
And then I have my point along my step size in X, Y, and Z. And I'm gonna check for collisions with a family that I wanna check against. And I'm gonna get my list of my objects in that family. And I'm gonna loop through them. And I'm gonna see if each of those have any uh, Z heights overlapping my current Z point. And if so, I'm gonna return that in a JSON with a bunch of other useful information. Okay, so let's do it. All right, so first I'm gonna clear out the JSON. So I have a start, a fresh one each time. This is what I'm gonna return is this 3D ray JSON to the user when they call this function. I'm gonna reset my hit count to zero. And I'm gonna do some initial math. And I'm gonna take right away and get my 2D distance on the XY plane and my 3D distance, similar to how we just did it. I'm using that function that we just set up. Um, and I'm gonna set that already into the JSON. What's my current 2D distance? What's my current 3D distance between my start and the end point that I already put in? You can kind of ignore this for now. I use this sprite just to troubleshoot uh, so that I can make sure that it was always pointing in the right direction. Okay, so let's go through here. And this is our first loop. So this is where we're going to step along our step size. Uh, so we're gonna name the loop index step and we're going to step uh, from zero to the int seal of this 2D ray divided by step size. So that will give us our number of steps that we need to go through. We're also at that point going to go ahead and calculate certain things that will be useful to us. One is the distance that I am um, from a step perspective. And we can do that just by multiplying my current step of my loop index times my step size. I do have it wrapped in a min in case it's at the very end and it goes past the overall length of my distance 2D ray, in which case it's set equal to distance 2D ray. Then we're gonna make use of a useful ratio that we're gonna need. Uh, there's a, an equation where you can get what's my X and Y along a 2D line, a certain distance from the start point. And you make use of this helper variable called T ratio, which is effectively the distance of my step, which we just calculated, divided by my overall 2D distance. And that ratio is gonna be used to help us compute the X and Y. And that's what we do here. So our step X is equal to this equation, one minus that ratio times the start X plus the ratio times the end X. And that's gonna get our X and you can do the same thing for the Y. Now that we have our X and Y along that step point, we have to do some 3D math to get the Z point along that line in 3D space for where I'm at in the X and Y. And the way that we do this is we set it equal to the start Z plus the DRN ray, which if you remember up here is actually NZ minus start Z. And then we're going to multiply that by the start, the step X, so where my current X is from a step perspective, minus my start X that I input into the function divided by the DR underscore L underscore ray, which is my end X minus my start X. All right, I know this is kind of complicated. Uh, there is a link in here if you want to go and review the equation of a line in 3D, but you kind of need to understand that math a little bit to understand how to implement this, but that's how you do it at a high level. Okay, so now that we have our point in 3D space, let's talk about how we're gonna do that collision check. So the very first thing is that we're gonna collect all of the objects in the family camera colliders overlapping the point step X and step Y. So regardless of the Z height, give me all the objects that are overlapping this currently. And we can make use of the current collision system inside of Construct 3 to collect all those. Then I'm gonna loop through the resulting shortened list of objects. And I'm gonna check is the Z height overlapping my step Z. So the way you can do this is with a lower and upper bound check. You input the step Z. The lower bound is the Z elevation changed into the pixel uh, realm. I have a variable here that used that camera 3D Z scale that I set at the beginning of the layout. So pixel per Z ratio. And then on the upper bound is the Z elevation plus its Z height. So if my point is overlapping that, then I know that I have a hit. All right, so what are we gonna do if we have a hit? So uh, the first thing is we're gonna do a couple checks. Uh, I wanna make sure that it's a unique hit. If I have a really big object and I'm stepping through it and I hit it like 30 times, I don't wanna see it show up in my JSON 30 times. I only wanna do it the first time and I, I wanna record that initial hit X, hit Y, and hit Z. So I do a check and say, okay, does it already exist in my hit list? If it does, it's not a unique hit, move on. If it is a unique hit, then we're gonna go ahead and record all the useful things that we wanna do. We're gonna update the hit count. We're gonna add to the overall hit list what the UID is, the hit X, the hit Y, and hit Z, as well as the distance in 2D and the distance in 3D. And I'm gonna return all that to the user. And that is our function. It's all done. So let's go ahead and pull up the game again, and I'll show you in the console what this looks like as a JSON. Okay, so we're back inside of the game. Let's go ahead and go into the first person. And 
as soon as I turn on the laser, you're going to see this thing starting to fire. And this is what it looks like. And so I'm constantly, when I'm in this mode, using that Raycast. And I have pretty good performance on this overall. Uh, it's not shown here, but I was running 60 FPS and, you know, 18 to 20% CPU and good GPU. So pretty happy with how this is running overall. So um, as you can see here, the, the way that I know the distance of how many pixels away I am is by using the return value that's coming from this function. Let's go ahead and escape this and move on over to the console. So I set my return equal to inside of another JSON and I put it underneath this laser, but this is what we returned. Hit count, I had six objects that I was hitting in that last time I uh, pulsed it. I calculated my 2D distance. The reason this 3D distance is pretty much 4,000 is because I put in, that's how long I wanted to check for my laser. If I made it a higher value, it would have been higher performance, you know, cost more performance, but you can decide that for your own implementations. And then I got all the useful variables that I needed inside of my game. And this is going to be really important for making different features that you can use, such as that laser. I use it in some of my camera controls. And there are probably some other features I'm going to have to make it, uh, use of this feature. So definitely something that you're going to want to figure out how to do and how to implement inside of your own games if you're working inside of 3D. Okay, everybody, if you like this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. Give me a thumbs up. It's free for you to do. It makes a big difference for me. And as always, a big thank you to my patrons. James Welch, J Clone13, McCall, Stevie Conlon, Lee Ching Ming. You guys are awesome. Super appreciate your support. Remember, if you are interested in supporting me on Patreon, you do get access to all of my edge assets relatively free to use in your games. Thank you, everybody, and have a nice day.